All right. Hi, everybody. We are on to chapter 10. This is your practice problem video. I'm going to show you three, uh, three things we can do in spreadsheet modeling. And in this first one, we're going to be looking at, um, uh, we're trying to figure out how much we're going to save if we were to outsource a, an item instead of producing it in-house. And this lets us compare um, what the effect of a small cost might be on the total uh, profits, costs um, uh, for the year, for whatever the period is we're measuring. Um, it also lets us see what would happen if we could reduce our cost for outsourcing, if we got a better deal somewhere else um, by creating data tables to kind of show us that. So we are going to uh, start with this first problem, this um, Nolan Plastics uh, problem. And, and what they've got is a fixed cost, a sunk cost. They're in for 234,000, I don't know, we'll call it a year in um, salaries and other overhead expenses. Um, and then if they were to uh, make this item in-house, it's gonna cost them $2 a unit to manufacture for every unit they need. Um, and then if they were to outsource this cost per unit, uh, how much How much would that, uh, it costs 350 per unit, but how much would the total cost be? Keep in mind, if we outsource, we don't have to run this factory at all. So we're not gonna have this overhead costs. So we need to see a couple of things. One, if we knew how many items we needed per year, then we could see, okay, well, what's the what's the cost savings going to be? Uh, two, um, at what what is that magic number in which one of them is better than the other? This is called the um, crossover uh, break-even point, um, where um, you know where one becomes better better than the other. So those are two different. Uh, um, Break-even point and crossover point are two different things. Uh, but in this case, the way that this problem is set up, um, it kind of becomes the same thing. At the point you break even, then you uh, also could cross over into this other option because we're weighing two options. Uh, sometimes with break-even analysis, you don't have, you're not weighing two different options. I think the problem from your book, you're not, you're not weighing two options. You're just trying to see um, what your, uh, you're, you're doing actual break-even analysis from the uh, problem one and two from your uh, from your problem set this week. Um, but I digress. So uh, first things first, um, with, with this uh, setup, you're gonna have a, a set of parameters or inputs. And the way I've got it set up for you to do is that these are all kind of highlighted in this light blue color. And what I'm looking for you to do there is whenever you see this light blue color, um, basically, that means you need to find the inputs from the textbook and type them in. Uh, in. In past problem sets, I've been entering those for you, but um, I need you to do a little bit of data entry on these ones and, and type them in if you see that light blue. If you see this salmon color, then that means that a formula has to be placed there. Some kind of uh, formula needs to exist. Um, there's I think on one of the uh, problems, you're gonna be looking to find production volume. Um, so that's gonna be part of your answer. If it's part of the answer you're looking for, I've got it highlighted in yellow. Um, but otherwise, if it's an actual input, uh, it's gonna be a, a light blue. There's problem three and four, the way that it's set up. Uh, I'll just show you real quick. You know, the number of non-member registrants is what, what it's called here. Well, on one of them, it's yellow, one of them, it's blue. Well, on one problem, that's what you're solving for. On the other one, um, you're solving based on a specific number that's given to you. So when you're given that number in the problem, you just type it in. When you're trying to find what that number is on problem three, uh, it's highlighted in yellow for that reason. So we've got uh, we've got this break-even point, or sorry, we've got these inputs, get break-even on my mind. All right, and what we don't know is uh, at what quantity is it gonna be um, you know, better for us to outsource versus uh, do it in-house. So the first thing we're going to do in this situation, because we're not told a quantity, I don't believe. Let me just double check in the, in the textbook real quick. I don't think we're told a specific quantity uh, to start with. Let's see. Um, the data tables is where they're at. What if analysis? Yeah, I think that in this one, we're not, we're not given uh, 10,000, looks like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to type. Uh, I'm just going to type ten thousand into that. 
into that cell there, uh, just because that's what's there in the book. But this could be any number because this is just one of um, another one of our inputs. So the total cost, if we're going to produce 10,000 units, is going to be equal to the um, quantity we produce times the variable cost per unit to manufacture it. But then we also have to add our fixed cost to that. So total cost is equal to your uh, number of units times your variable cost and then add your fixed cost. And you can do that the other way around. You can do fixed cost first and then add your variable cost. It comes out to be the same thing. Uh, but either way, we get 254,000 here. So 254,000, that's going to be what it's going to cost us to make 10,000 units in-house. Uh, if we were to outsource that instead, well, we don't have a fixed cost. There's no overhead whatsoever. We don't have a manufacturing facility. So instead, we've got 10,000 units times $3.50 to outsource it. Well, it's a huge difference. So you can see the savings due to outsourcing is, is going to be equal to the cost to produce minus the cost to outsource. We would save 219000 by doing it this way. And the problem of getting in your problem set is a little more complicated, but the idea of having these inputs and then using references to these inputs to create your outputs. Um, based on the problem as it's worded, uh, part of the trick is you know, this week is you're gonna have to figure out what those steps are gonna need, need to look like. So I think that honestly, um, we've been doing a lot of spreadsheet analysis throughout this class just by virtue of the way that I have set these problem sets up for you. You're not solving them by hand. We've been kind of doing all this along the way, um, the, the inputs and the outputs. And so um, in order to, you know, make it a challenge on par with the other, I mean, still not on par with some of the chapters, um, you know, figuring out what those steps need to look like, thinking through the problem, using your um, using the, uh, deductive reasoning and critical thinking skills to determine, okay, well, uh, total cost produced, well, okay, I know I need to have this and then make it 10,000 units times this, right? So little things like that, you'll, you'll just have to kind of figure out what those formulas need to look like, but they're all simple formulas. They're all gonna be this times this or this times this plus this, uh, something to that degree. Okay, and why did we set up this way? Well, what if we um, we knew we made 50,000 units, right? I can type in 50,000 units, I can still see what, what's that savings look like. Um, but if we wanna do additional what if analysis, then we can create some data tables. So, um, and if you're following along the book, um, I think we started on page around, around 514, give or take, is where this uh, problem started. And now moving on to data tables, I think it's 516. So the first thing we do when we're setting up a data table is we just um, have to, uh, you know, put one little something in, the, in this first cell. And what we want to look for is, um, you know, what if we didn't make, 50, you know, 10,000 units, right? But what if instead we made um, zero units or 25,000 units or, 50,000 or keep going, keep going, keep going, right? Um, we could get all the way up to 300,000 units. Uh, and at some point along the way, there's gonna be a crossover from one of these being more profitable than the other. Now, when you're setting up a data table, the data table needs to know what cell, what formula is it is it basing these quantities on? And so, what, what we want it to output is the savings due to outsourcing. At what point that savings crosses over from uh, actually being savings to not saving any money at all. So what we have to do is you don't type in the value in this cell, but you have to click equals and then click on that cell. So that the data table knows what series of inputs to outputs has, has arrived at uh, the thing we're looking to find, which is savings due to outsourcing. So now that this is listed here, what I do is I highlight uh, everything from the very top leftmost cell. And this actually, this quantity cell, this can be blank. Um, I tend to put something there just as a reminder that you need to highlight all of these cells. So starting with the top left, all the way to the bottom right of what the table is gonna look like, we highlight all of that. And then we go to the data tab, 
And under what if analysis, which if, if you've got a smaller screen, it, it might be scrunched up under the word forecast, but what if analysis, and we're gonna do a data table. And there's only one option if you're choosing a one-way or a two-way data table, um, but whether or not you put in uh, anything into the row input cell or the column input cell is what um, determines if it gives you a one-way or two-way table. So the first thing we do is a one-way table. And what we want is for the column, so everything in this column, we want that to be inputted in this column based on um, changing something. What was the input from our original table that arrived at $219,000? And so we're, we're looking at changing that quantity to arrive at a different amount of profit. So for this column, we wanna know what input, out of all these inputs we have highlighted in blue, what was the thing that we could change? What's our decision variable that we could change? Uh, and we can see I wrote quantity because it's quantity right here, right? So you just write whatever matches up. And so for the column, for all the cells in that column, we want it to be based on uh, this, not, this value right here. So at 10,000, you know, it's, it's, the profit is somewhere in, in this range where it's gonna output. I'll just click okay so you can see what happens. So what happens is that it just spits out and I'm gonna, is reformat this real quick um, to currency. It spits out what the profit would look like, uh, uh, profit, but the savings due to outsourcing would look like if we didn't make any units. Well, if we made no units, we'd save 234,000, but we wouldn't have any for sale because uh, we never end up making any or buying any. If I buy 25,000 units versus making 25,000 units, I'm gonna save 196,500. And at some point along the way, you can see somewhere between here and here, it crosses over from saving money to actually costing us money. So there's a certain amount of units we could produce that is gonna be uh, more equitable to us uh, to produce in-house. It takes a while to get there. You have to do a lot of units, but you can see if I was gonna do 300,000 units of, of production, I'm gonna save 216,000 by making them in-house. So a huge initial cost, and it takes a while, but eventually you end up breaking even. Now there's many ways we can figure out um, at what point this actual crossover point exists. We know it's somewhere between 150 and 175,000. So I could guess, all right, I could say, okay, well, 155,000, all right, still not at an even amount. Okay, 160,000, oops, 160,000. Okay, now that's not, that's too many, 157,000. And eventually 156,000, I found it, right? Time consuming, uh, doesn't really accomplish much. So let's just see what else we can do to find that value. What we can do is we can go back to the data tab, back to what if analysis, analysis and select uh, goal C. What's our goal? Our goal is to set uh, this cell, this cell right here, the savings due to outsourcing, to zero dollars. We want this to come out to zero dollars because that's the point at which I break even and cross over uh, to, um, to where one is more profitable than the other. And what would we change? By changing the cell quantity, this 55,000 right here. Click okay, and it's gonna do it for us. It's gonna change this to the exact number and it's gonna say, uh, found a solution, target value is zero, current value is zero. Great, we click okay and we're done. So we knew it was gonna be somewhere between here based on the data table, um, but this also lets us look at things like what happens if we can get a better deal? If we can get better than $3.50, well, is it still more profitable? Or if it's gonna cost us more because the price is going up next year, is it still more profitable? For that purpose, we need to do what's called a two-way data table. So in a two-way data table, we have two inputs determining both the column and the rows. So both these and along the top here. And for that, we're gonna look at, they've given us some values on page, I think 517. We've got five bids for a better deal. So in a two-way table, the top left corner, we don't give it a label anymore. Instead, we click equals and then click on the savings due to out outsourcing. The same thing we did right here, same thing we did right here, we're gonna do right here in this table. 
So I'm just going to kind of um, outline this so you can see the starting point, right? So we just click equals and then click on savings due to outsourcing. Now, the next step is we our quantities don't change. So I can just copy and paste these over, these quantity amounts that we're looking at. They don't change. Uh, we still want to know, you know, uh, how many do we need to make to where one's better than the other. But then we're going to type in the uh, bid amounts we got. So the book is $2.89, 313 the same $350 we already had, $354 and $359. And I'm going to highlight all of this and go ahead and make it currency now because it's going to end up being currency. And then I'm going to highlight all of this now that I know the width of the table, and I'm going to go ahead and just add borders to it. So what we want now is we want it to fill in all of these gaps. In here, if I was to uh, uh, get a bid at $3.13 and I made 75,000 units, what would be my savings? If I was to get a bid of three fifty nine dollars and I made 225,000 units, what would be my savings? And so on. So again, I'm going to highlight everything. And then from there, I'm going to go to the data tab. What if analysis data table, but instead of just putting in the column input cell, the column input cell is going to be the same. Everything on this column is based on this uh, quantity right here. Everything in this row is based on the outsourcing cost per unit. But we've got better bids, and we're going to see everything based on the row. We're using this input to originally arrive at this answer. So, oops, I'm sorry. Click on the wrong spot here. Click on row input cell, and that input is right here. The, the savings due to outsourcing cell B17 here was based on 350 for our uh, outsourcing cost, and um, this cell was used for the quantity. When I click OK, it's going to Give me all numbers because I've got it too large of a font. So let's make it a little bit wider. It's still too large. I'm zoomed in too much. There we go. And to make this a little easier to see what's going on, we can apply conditional formatting to each of these. And I've got an uh, assignment for you. Um, one of the instructions I, I, I say on there, um, you know, make sure anything less than zero dollars is highlighted in some way. So I'm going to apply conditional formatting. So conditional formatting, highlight sales rules, less than zero. Anything less than zero, I just, I'm using the default, but anything less than zero, uh, we want to uh, fill in darker. So we know that we want anything, you know, anything that, that's in this area based on the amount we're going to produce is still uh, profitable to outsource it. If, if we knew that we were going to make 275,000 units, I know at a glance that it, it's not going to work. And right here at 350 a unit, we know, you know, somewhere over 150,000, it's not going to be profitable. And if you want to use a different conditional formatting, if, if, if you want to use um, like col uh, you know, data bars or color scales, you know, I guess you could do that as well. Just show me in some way that if it's a negative number, you've got it highlighted differently. All right, uh, moving along, we're gonna go to um, this one. This is gonna match up uh, pretty much with your problem number 10 from the book. And um, there's not gonna be a lot to this one because all you're gonna need to do is uh, figure out the total number of units shipped from one spot to the next and the total number of units received at each of these destinations. All the values are filled in for you. Um, this problem is a little bit of a gimme uh, because it's going to be very similar to something we're going to be doing in Chapter 11, and I want to get this part of it comfortable. Just the, the idea of looking at what's going on in this type of map because while in this chapter all these are filled in, we're going to be using uh, the solver tool to figure these out for us in the next chapter. And it's it, it can be a little complicated at first until you really grasp it. So I just wanna get you used to what's going on with at least part of this, this uh, type of problem first. So in this, this is called a transportation problem. And in the transportation problem, you have cost of, from an origin to a destination. So Cleveland shipping to Boston, Cleveland shipping to Chicago, et cetera, Bedford to St. Louis. And based on who ships to where, you've got a variable cost involved. 
Now, each of the origin always has a certain amount of supply available um, in stock at that warehouse. And each of the destinations have a certain amount they are demanding. We need at least this many units. And so with, with these, we, um, we will use a solver tool to figure out, well, what amount needs to ship from where to where. This has been given to you. Uh, but part, part, part of what you'll have to do is, is just to uh, add up how many units have been shipped. So um, this is going to be probably fairly simple based on some of the other stuff we've done. But the units shipped is going to be equal to everything shipped from Cleveland to Boston, Chicago, St. Louis, and Lexington. I just noticed there's a typo in Chicago. Didn't, didn't write this file. Um, Chicago. Uh, Cleveland, all of these, that's going to be the total amount of units shipped. Everything from Bedford to Boston, uh, Chicago, St. Louis, Lexington, that's going to be the total units shipped. So this is just an equal sum formula. I mean, it really is that easy. There is not much to uh, problem 10 at all. It's worth fewer points because of that reason, but um, it's just to kind of get you comfortable with seeing this kind of pro this kind of problem. So uh, you're just going to add the sum of each of these uh, destinations. Did Boston get 6,000 units? You can compare that to this demand. Yes, they got 6,000. They, they needed 4,000 Chicago. They got 4,000 and so on. Um, we didn't use more units than we had in our supply. And then for total cost, we're going to be using a sum product feature. So sum product is going to highlight two different uh, ranges. It's going to multiply the, the matching ranges in the same order um, by each other and then add all those values together. So we're going to take all of our dollar amounts and do a sum product with those and all the amounts that were shipped. So what will happen is it'll do 5,000 times 3 plus 0 times 2 plus 0 times 7 plus 0 times 6 plus 1,000 times 6 plus 4,000 times 5 and so on. It's going to do the entire thing for us. But instead of writing out equals this times this plus this times this plus this times this and going on for that long of a formula, I can do equals sum product. I like this array, comma, highlight my second array and hit enter and I'm done. So that's all there is to that problem. Pretty simple, pretty quick. Um, not worth very many points, but I just needed you to see it. All right, now let's look at a, a VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP, if you're not familiar, allows you to have a table with a bunch of values in it and based on um, certain parameters, to look up certain percentages, look up certain values in it and return certain values. So it kind of does what we've done with like count ifs and sum ifs and other kind of if statements um, all in one. Um, it's, it's a pretty great tool. Um, it's not the most intuitive, but once you understand it, it's, it's, um, it's used a lot <laughs> uh, in analytics in, in, you know, just really any kind of administrative work. Whoever's in Excel is probably using VLOOKUPs. So in this problem, uh, basically, if a person's um, uh, target sales are, if the, if the number of sales that they got was between zero and 10%, um, then they're gonna get no bonus points. If, if their sales were between 11 and 50%, they're gonna get 10 bonus points and so on. And based on the number of bonus points they get, they're gonna get a certain percentage of the bonus pools. There's $250,000 in bonuses up for grab among these five employees, pretty sweet. Uh, so they're each gonna get a percentage of the, um, of the total there. They're each gonna get a percentage of that and um, Second. Yeah, there's going to be a percentage of that, uh, of that pool, and then um, they're going to get a bonus amount equal to, um, you know, whatever that percentage of the pool from this bonus pool here. So let me just do one thing to set. There we go. These were all scrunched up. But the, the, it wasn't adding up to 250000 but now it is. So um, the V lookup. So what we're going to do is we're going to look up um, – this value here, this percentage above total sales from each of these employees, and we're going to look it up in this table here, inside of this table, and whatever it finds, so 83% is between 80 and 99%.
So it finds that it should return 25 as the bonus points. So here's how the VLOOKUP function works. VLOOKUP, look for, what, what am I looking up? I'm looking up 83%, comma, what's the table that I'm looking it up in? So I'm not locking in the lookup amount. I'm not looking into that 83%. And I'm not doing that because I'm gonna copy this down to all of his employees. So I've got this selected, this B15, Barth's um, uh, percentage above sales, which is covered up right now because the formula is long. Um, but I'm not locking that cell in. What I am gonna lock in is the table array. So I'm gonna look at this table here and just selecting the values, not the labels. And in that one right there, I am going to lock that in because when I copy it down, I don't want the table to change. Now, here's where it gets um, a little goofy. It's going to say um, column index number. So how the VLOOKUP works is it's telling us what value does it want returned and which column is that in? And you might say, well, it's in column C. Uh, but if it... it this always uses a numerical value, and it's based on the number of columns in the table. There are one, two, three columns in this table. If we want the bonus points to display, this is the third column, so we're going to type the number three. And if this, was, if this table was moved over here somewhere, you wouldn't have to change it to say column M or column N. It doesn't work that way. Instead, it's always the third column in this particular table. If this was you know, seven columns, but we wanted the fourth one, we would just type in four um, and it would know exactly which of the columns to look in for the value. And then I'm gonna close my parentheses and hit enter. And from there, it's gonna give us 25. Well, 83%, I can look at the table is 25 bonus points. So from here, I can drag this down and it's gonna give me zero, or zero, zero percent, 118%, it's over, they went over 100% uh, of the uh, target. So they're gonna get 40 points for going above, right? So all of these look to be working. And now what I wanna do is I need to sum these values up. So I'm gonna hit sum, actually I'm gonna hit, uh, what is it? Alt, uh, alt equals now. Enter, nope. There's a shortcut here. Uh, control equals, ah. There's a shortcut to auto sum, and all of a sudden I'm forgetting it. Control all equals? Nope. I just absolutely cannot remember what the shortcut is. It's something with equals or enter, control all. I don't remember. So I'm going to type equals sum. My mind has gone blank. Equals sum, and I'm going to sum it up at the bottom. Now, in this one, we want to figure out okay, well, what percentage of the entire pool did they achieve? And so what that's looking at is 25 points out of a total of 295 points. That's going to that's going to determine what percentage of this pool they are going to get. So um, 25 out of, and we want to lock in this reference here, and that's going to tell us that eight, they got 8.5 percent of the pool. So 25 out of 295 is their percentage of the pool. Copy this down, and we figured out what everybody's percentage of the pool is. I'm gonna copy this over because it's the equal sum and it should sum to one because you add all of these up and it gets this percentage and I could change it to a percentage to show 100%. Uh, and then finally, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this percentage of the pool and I'm gonna give each of these employees 8.5% of the $250,000 pool, 0% of it, 13.6% of it, and so on. So equals this percent times this pool, lock that in, hit enter, Double click this dot to have it auto fill all the way to the bottom. And then equals sum. 250,000 was paid out. So um, I don't think you need any of this part for your work. That was a little bit extra, but the VLOOKUP part is what you, what you need to know. So VLOOKUP this value in this table and return which column are you looking at? All right, so uh, that's what we've got th for this week. If you have any questions, as always, just send me an email and we'll see you in chapter 11. Thanks everybody.